Welcome back to part two of our allegation alternate method tutorial. In part one, we looked at questions one and two, and now we will finish off with questions three, four, and five. To be successful with these types of problems, you do need to know how to use this chart. And I explained how to use it in part one, but again, I will remind you how it works in part two. So the question reads, a hospital pharmacist wants to use three lots of ichthymol ointment containing respectively 50%, 20%, and 5% of ichthymol. In what proportion should they be mixed to prepare a 10% ichthymol ointment? So we have two that are greater than the desired strength and one that's less. In order for us to get a 10% strength, we need to mix together one of the strong ones with the weak one. So we have two that are stronger than the weak. We have to make a mix between the 50% and the 5% and the 20% and the 5%. So using this chart, this schematic as we did before, the percents given are 50, 20, and 5%. And the desired percent is 10%. So that goes in the middle column. This mixture will result into three parts, each part representing the amount of the three solutions we're starting with. And over here, they're represented as X, Y, but for us, it will be X, Y, and Z. So X represents the amount of parts of the 50%, Y represents the amount of parts of the 20%, and Z represents the amount of parts of the 5%. But unlike in questions one and two, where we only started with two solutions to make our final, here we have three, 50, 20, and five. So what we will do is mix the 50% with the 5%, and that could lead to 10%. And we'll also be mixing the 20% with the 5%. So if we mix the 50% and the 5%, subtracting 10 from 50 results into 40. So that value, 40, 50 minus 10, goes over here. 40 parts of the 5%. And to get the amount of parts of the 50%, we will take 10, subtract it from this value, 10 minus 5, and that value goes up there, which is 5 parts. So 5 parts of the 50 and 40 parts of the 5% would lead to 10%. Now, since we want to use all three of our starting solutions, then we also need to find out the amount of parts of the 20%. So again, what I will do, and I'll rewrite it underneath here, the chart. So that's 20%, 5%, 10% in the middle, and y and z, I'll subtract 10 from 20, which results into another 10 parts of the 5%. Then I'll do 10 minus 5 and put that value up there, which is 5. So we need 5 parts of the 50%. We need 5 parts of the 20%. And we need 40 plus 10, these two values that I'm highlighting, of the 5%, which makes 50. Writing this down as a ratio, it's 5 to 5 to 50. And reducing this ratio down by dividing each of these terms by 5, we get 1 to 1 to 10. So 1 part 50, 1 part 20, and 10 parts 5%. That's the answer to question number 3. In question number 4, in what proportions may a manufacturing pharmacist mix 20%, 15%, 5%, and 3% zinc oxide ointment to produce 10% ointment? So let me just make some space over here so I don't have to scroll down so much. We have 20, 15, 5, and 3%. The desired percent is 10%, which means that we would have to mix one of the stronger ones with one that is weaker than 10% being the five or the three. Or similarly, we could mix the 15 with either the five or the three. And this would lead to four different parts, which I'll call A, B, C, and D. Now we have a choice. We can mix the 20 with the five or the 20 with the three. Now, this means that you could get multiple answers for this problem. So I'm choosing to mix the 20% with the 5% and 
and the 15% with the 3%. Now, if you choose to mix the 20 with the 3 instead, and the 5 and the 15 instead, then your values here will be different. Okay, so I will do the work on the side here. I have 20% with 5%, and the desired is 10%. I'm calling this one A and C, just so that I'm consistent with how I label these. 20 minus 10 is 10 parts. So that's the amount of parts I'll need for C. And 10 minus 5, the answer goes up there, being 5 parts. So 5 parts of the 20, 10 parts of the 5. Now I will do the next one, which is the 15% and the 3% being mixed. Our desired is 10%. We have the letters B and D. 15 minus 10 is 5. So 5 parts of D, 5 parts of the 3%. And 10 minus 3 makes 7. So writing these values down as a ratio, we have 5 to 7, so that's A, B, C, and D. C would be 10, and D would be 5. Of course, we could reduce this ratio down by taking the smallest value in this ratio being 5 and dividing each of these by 5. So dividing that by 5, I get 1. Dividing 7 by 5 gives me 1.4. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. Now in case you're curious, had we chosen to mix the 20 with the 3 and the 15 with the 5 instead, our ratio would have been 7 to 5 to 5 to 10 before being reduced. Now in our final question we have how much 50% weight per volume dextrose solution in milliliters and how much 5% weight per volume dextrose solution in milliliters are required to prepare 4,500 milliliters of a 10% weight per volume solution. This question is interesting because now they are asking us for the quantity. So again making some room we have 50% and 5% and our desired strength is 10%. We are looking for A and B, those are the parts of each. 10 take away 50 makes 40, so 40 parts of the 5%. And 10 minus 5 is 5 parts of the 50%. So our ratio is 5 to 40 and we can reduce this down to 1 and 8, and altogether that's 9 parts. 8 plus 1 is 9. So 1 out of 9 of the entire solution of the entire 4,500 milliliters will be coming from the 50%. And 8 out of 9 of the entire solution will be coming from the much weaker one, the 5%. So I'll multiply 1 over 9 times 4,500, and that means we need 500 milliliters of the 50%, and the rest will be of the 5%, which will be 4,000 milliliters. And there you have it. Three more allegation alternate method examples that you can use. If you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to our channel or use our website at biology-forums.com if you have any further questions. Talk to you later.